I'm waiting for it to, okay, here it now says live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Facebook Lives that we are doing, and it actually is also going on YouTube and other places. We're doing these to highlight some of our speakers that are going to be at this wonderful event that we're having in April, April 12, 13, and 14, a virtual three-day heart-to-heart event. This one is focusing on nutrition for uh, lymphedema and lipedema. And so I am so pleased today. We're lucky enough to have uh, one of our keynote speakers, Dr. Gabrielle Ferber from Hamburg, Germany. And she is going to be speaking at the event, but she also has just an, an astounding career in medicine and um, working with lipedema and uh, other um, lymphological diseases. And so um, I'm thrilled to be, speak here with you, Gabrielle, and, and hear more first about you and and your practice in Germany and and what you've been doing and then this incredible presentation you're going to be giving for us at our event but first can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself because you have an incredible background hi Leslie and thank you very much for uh, letting me be with you and uh, I'm looking forward to, to this event as I did to the former ones when I was um, lucky enough to be a speaker so um, what can I tell you about myself well I started out as a GP many years ago and found myself somehow um, drifting towards phlebology uh, which then was my main um, occupation for 10, 15 years, until lymphology started to become a sort of specialized field in Germany. And um, that's when I when I started, when well, you, as a phlebologist, you always treat or you always used to treat um, lymphedema and lipedema patients. But um, when, when this subspecialization um, happened, um, it became more intense. And, and we, in, in our surgery, we have... Uh, a lot of lymphedema and lipedema patients. We are the biggest lymphedema or center for lymphedema, lipedema um, in the north of Germany. So, um, yeah, plenty, plenty to do. And then that was it for some time until, and now I'm coming to the point, until we started to realize that many of our lymphedema patients were um, obese or what we thought was that lymphedema patients became more and more obese and that was when we when we started paying more attention or special attention and discovered that um, it seemed that a lot of those lymphedema patients um, did not have primary lymphedema or secondary lymphedema from operations or radiation radiation also but it was because they were very, uh, very much overweight, obese, and that caused the, um, the edema. And then also the, um, the public interest, the, the um, um, lipedema became much more um, well known in Germany because of TV and media and, and so on. So there was, there was a lot of interest in what is lipedema? How can you can you treat it? And that's how I finally ended up um, looking at the nutrition side of um, lipedema, which at the time was thought to be uh, not not possible to influence by by nutrition or by by diet by by eating habits, which as we know now is completely wrong, and that mm -hmm. thought. Um, in 2008. Since then, it's been 16 years, I can't believe it. And since then, I've been concentrating more or less on how can I treat lipedema patients by um, nutrition. And yes. I'm very pleased that, um, sorry, if I if I go on and on and on, just interrupt me. If oh, that's what we want to go on and on about. <laughs> So I'm, I'm, I'm really, the, the latest development, as you know, is, has been the, um, um, the, the, the uh, yeah, the review of the, of the German guideline for lipedema, which wasn't really a review. It was, it was quite a new guideline that we, we managed to, to 
um, to write, and that is in online since um, since I think beginning of February, and I'm I'm very pleased that we could include a chapter on um, nutrition, yeah. waste and nutrition, um, and we we um, carried together everything that we could find in the way of recent papers and not so recent papers, most of them very recent papers on nutrition. And I'm very pleased that we were able to implement those um, recommendations in, in, in the guidelines. Yeah. And, and now, uh, are, they, are the guidelines available in English yet? I've only seen in German. Not quite. We, are, um, we found a translator. Um, and I think he's going to start working on, on it in, in a few days. Uh -huh. uh, so it will then, I mean, this was a question of financing as well. Um, we, it will be um, available online um, if you, if you not buy, uh, at, at the moment, if you go on uh, Lipidema Guideline Germany or Light Lean, uh -huh. you will find the German uh, version on this on the website of this organization that is responsible for all the guidelines in, in Germany or in the German speaking countries. Yes. And on that website, there will be an, a, a complete unabridged English version, which mm -hmm. I really um, tried to have um, uh, everybody to agree to because um, there will be a paper in one of the journals. Um, in, oh, in okay. A German um, Derm Dermatological Society, and that will be in English online, but it will be a very abridged version, of course. Yes, yeah, because so. the, the full document, which you're going to be speaking about, uh, specifically the, the nutrition guidelines at our event in April, um, the full unabridged doc document, it's like over 100 pages, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's it's not really because we decided to have all the references for or the reference oh. for each chapter after each chapter because okay. we thought it would be easier to to look at the references. Um, yes. You had them just below the chapter, not at the end. So um, it's probably around 80, 80 pages. Okay, it's still extensive. Yeah. <laughs> around eighty pages, yeah. it's still very extensive. Because this document, I mean, it, it talks about diagnosis and all the various ways to make a diagnosis along with imaging and various things. And then it goes into all the various different treatment strategies. I mean, it, it just, it, it, there's an incredible amount of, of information in this document. Hmm. Yeah, and it took us the best part of three years to get yes. <laughs> and from the from the point from the time when we thought it was finished until it was eventually published, it took another six months or seven months. Mm -hmm. so, um, I'm really glad it's, <laughs> it's yes. Um, and and what what we tried, I mean, you know, Leslie, that there are diverse um, views on lipidema and on the various treatment options, and, so on. and especially in Germany, um, there is quite a lot of controversy. Um, and the fact that we managed to come to um, uh, an, an agreement on, on everything um, yes. is, is, <laughs> is more than I expected at the beginning. Yeah. Yes. So, of course, not everybody is 100% happy with every single sentence, but you can rely on, uh, on, on the fact that we worked very hard and we sometimes we, we analyzed sentence by sentence to come yes. to, to consensus. So yes. we did our best and I hope it will be. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's an incredible accomplishment and we look forward to hearing about it uh, more in more detail um, at, at the event. And uh, you kind of brushed over it, but you know, your career in lymphology and, and helping um, lymphedema and lipedema patients and specifically using nutrition, not only to work with the obesity, but also to treat their uh, their lymphatic condition as well um, is is I mean you're the one who is the only one who's doing it basically I mean this is pretty astounding what you and your clinic did can you talk about just a little bit about what those early days were like when you started introducing nutrition to your patients mm -hmm. 
Well, actually, it was the, the, the lipidema patients that made us think about something mm -hmm. to do because yes. we, we, we try to find an, an alternative to liposuction. Yes. Uh, and mm, we, we found the, this, um, um, this, those colleagues in the Netherlands who treated, they didn't know anything about lipidema or lymphedema, they just treated obese people. And they did that by using two different machines. Um, one um, was endomology, LPG, one um, ultrasound, lipolysis. Mm -hmm. And so we thought we could possibly, or the hope was that we could try to facilitate um, lipidema volume decrease, to, to decrease of lipidema um, adipose tissue by using those, those machines, or at least the ultrasound uh, lipolysis, which then would have been or was followed by by the um, by the endomology um, mm -hmm. for for better results. Um, anyway, to cut a long story short, we we started out doing just that and found we we had we we, we really uh, patients lost weight, lost volume, lost circumferences, felt better. And it took us some time um, to realize that it wasn't the machines at all, or uh, only to a very minimal effect. It was the nutrition. Because in order for, theoretically, for the ultrasound machine to work, that is to say, for the ultrasound to empty the adipocytes, the fat cells, we needed to put the, the patients on a ketogenic diet. That was the best. I heard about the ketogenic diet. It was, mm -hmm. to be honest, it wasn't really um, my my cleverness or my mm -hmm. I don't know genius. It was just because I I was told if you want to use this machine, you have to make sure um, that um, after the treatment, those adipocytes don't fill up rapidly again. So that's what we did. And then, of course, this treatment was comparatively expensive. So I, um, I convinced my then senior partner and boss um, to, to have two, two sort of two treatment options, one with the machines and one without. And to my amazement, um, the, the group or the, 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 those patients who didn't undergo the, um, the treatment just underwent dietary changes and went on a, on a ketogenic diet, they were absolutely the same. They lost the same weight. They lost the same mm -hmm. in the way of their conferences. Mm -hmm. Their symptoms became better. So we realized that nutrition was, you know, this old, this old saying, let, let nutrition, let food be thy medicine. Yes. Uh, it came, came true and nobody expected that because, as I said before, at the time we did not really believe that you could, you could um, influence lipidema by nutrition. And then right. I started, in 2010, I started talking at our, our national conferences, uh, annual conferences, and I was sort of, you know, I was the lonely, how do you say, <laughs> the desert, I don't know. Yes, yes. <laughs> People listened and said, oh, that's amazing. And uh -huh. can I have patience to you? Uh, uh -huh. but, but nobody really, I mean, they, they didn't really show much interest. And then this yeah. slowly increased. And then you guys started about five years. No, when did you start? 15, 2015? Well, um, uh, with uh, Lipedema uh, Simplified, we gave a first just exploratory webinar about it, maybe in 2016. I had been talking about it and did a, my own little small pilot study with lymphedema yeah. in 2015. And mm -hmm. so I, so, but I was five years after you had already been doing this in, in Germany and I, I had no idea about you. I felt like I was in a, you know, <laughs> by myself, the only person suggesting this wacky thing. And yeah. uh, so, you know, to, to connect with someone that already had, you know, uh, half a decade of experience in it was so wonderful because I, we were just, we just hypothesized, well, it seemed to work well with obesity. It seemed that the lymphedema went down, but 
I don't have any idea if it'll work on lipedema. And and really, when we first started, we were using like the the ketogenic diet that's used for epilepsy. It wasn't modified for lipedema, and you were already in that place. I think that you are using a protein optimized uh, ketogenic diet for your patients, so you had already been able to make these adjustments for the condition. And we were just going, I don't know if, if this might work. <laughs> so. So um, it, it was quite fascinating to see. And, and so now it, when we jump forward to like 2016, when we first started talking about it in the U.S., were you, was it the idea of using keto for lipedema a little bit more accepted where you were in Europe at that point? Or was it still you were the only person? I think it was basically still like that. Yes. <laughs> I mean, probably, probably because I, I was a member and um, member of the, um, uh, of the uh, board um, of the of the German Society of Phlebology at the time, and lymphology. And we, I, in the meantime, we we fused. We are now one one society, uh, but probably because of that, and because of me speaking on those conferences. The, the group of doctors who, who you know, the, phlebolo the phlebologists and lymphologists were probably the, the first ones to, to hear about um, the ketogenic diet besides neurologists who'd already been doing a lot for, for decades. Um, mm. But it was still, it still happened sometimes that I was, um, say, I was at a, con a, a, a small conference um, where talking on 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 thrombosis and cancer and the 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 other speakers or the one of the other speakers um said to me oh he said to the to the um to the, um, um, to the listeners um or would you risk your patient's health and life by putting them on a ketogenic diet and he didn't know i was there and he didn't well he knew i was there yes. but yeah. You know, so I, I, um, I said, well, um, actually, I've been doing this for seven years, and none of my patients <laughs> has done right. it. Right. It was still a very much um, sort of um, outsider method. Yes, yeah, a lot of resistance. I had, I remember a friend of mine uh, was at the International um, Society of Lymphology meeting, and Peter Carmelet from Belgium was. Uh, there and talking about his mice studies mm -hmm. using keto um, and looking at lymphatics. And she said, did you know about this? <laughs> so, so I think that, that, um, that was a, maybe around 2017, you know, that they were starting to look at animal studies. Mm -hmm. um, I guess not knowing that it's just already being used by people and, and having, having fabulous results. But I think everything turned from in the last four years. Absolutely. Now there's all these studies, you know, out of Poland, out of Italy, yeah. you know, uh, Norway. So there's all these studies specifically, mostly about lipedema. Maybe mm -hmm. because there's no animal model for, for lipedema. So they went straight to people. And so now with all of these clinical trials and case study reports, what do you feel like the um, response is the lithology community now that we have more um, substantiation that this might actually work? Well, I don't you think it's amazing that in in so many different parts of the world, um, suddenly, as you say, about four or five years ago, therapists, doctors started to try this without. Yes. I'm in the meantime, we know about each other, but yes. in, in 2016, 17, I don't think we knew about each other. Everybody no. in Italy, um, Roberto Canataro, or in, in, in Brazil, I don't know when he started, um, Alexandra Mato. Um, yes. Was yes. The, only very recently, only during the last two or three years. Mm -hmm. uh, they they started doing it in a very they, they I mean actually I admire their work because they they are based at a university so they can they can do proper studies and they can um, have bigger samples and mm -hmm. 
So I think from from their group, uh, the most valuable results have have been coming in the last few years. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, well, we had this Potsdam conference in was it beginning of October, I think. Um, yes. And still then, when you talk about keto, the ketogenic diet, you find um, lymphologists who stand up and say, this is, you can only be on a ketogenic diet for two or three months. Uh, yes. It's dangerous and it's, it's lacking yes. um, uh, whatsoever. So it's still, yeah. still a lot there's, of... Pressure. There's still resistance. Mm -hmm. I, I think that they're coming around. <laughs> I mean, I saw that in my own little community when a doctor would refer their patient and then their patient would want to try the diet. And so, and then um, the doctor, very concerned, would then run a bunch of blood tests and, and heart function tests and all this. And the patient felt great, looked great, and all of their blood and stuff, all the testing came back perfect. And they're still a little bit hesitant, but I think, you know, I feel, I feel them starting to shift that maybe this is going to be okay. <laughs> um, so is it really, I mean, from your experience, um, it, it, and I'm sure that you're monitoring the, the patient's blood uh, work and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, what has been your experience with the, not only the impact on their lipedema symptoms, but in their health in general, what's been your experience? I mean, only part of my my patients that are that I put on on a ketogenic diet are, are lipedema patients. Many of of them are just obese, and most most of those are insulin resistant or yes. pre diabetic or already diabetic and uh, high cholesterol and and all sorts of things. Blood mm -hmm. blood pressure blood pressure and um, uh, I mean I I. I I monitor them all. Everybody has um, a, 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 a really um, thorough blood test at the beginning, and then every four to eight weeks, depending on which values um, were were not not clear, and um, everything becomes better, mm -hmm. um, especially. And I think that is uh, to do with, or that is part of the effect on lipedema is the extremely um, the extreme reduction of insulin levels uh, we can theor theorize uh, the is it theoreticize or theorize um, theorize yes uh -huh. <laughs> on those effects i'm convinced that um, this is part of the effect um, of the ketogenic diet on lipedema that the the not only the blood sugar but the insulin levels drop mm -hmm. Considerably. So no, I mean, I've, in all those um, sixteen years, mm -hmm. I have not had to stop one patient um, for um, health reasons or for you know changes in their blood in, in, their, in their blood test and their lab work. Mm -hmm. um, never, ever. Even mm -hmm. you know, at the beginning, we were concerned about um, 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 renal function, right? Or, I first started out. I was worried sometimes. After after a few weeks, the the liver values rose, which is quite all right because it's just showing the liver is is um, um, working on on uh, overtime, so to speak. So, but mm -hmm. everything has been um, everything is yeah. It's it's really amazing. Mm -hmm. And that again, um, the Polish group. Uh, around um, uh, Margosata Jetsorek, um, they did those. Um, they, they compared blood tests and analyzed yes. Yes. the same thing. Yes, yeah. So that was the Polish study, and they had done um, uh, a comparison of low carb versus really low carb, but ketogenic, and they did um, what the impact that it had on the symptoms of lipedema, but then they also looked at the, their blood work. And that was pretty astounding um, that they did not see stuff, any problems with kidney, with liver function um, and uh, the lipid panels and all that kind of stuff was, was um, totally fine. So that was, um, I think, really important um, to convince those that are still resistant to doing the diet long term and even indefinitely. Um, yeah. With my patients, and I'm sure you've seen this with yours as well, that 
since they're feeling so good, they see no reason to stop the diet, even if their GP is telling them that maybe they should. They don't see a reason to do it because they feel so good. And yep. that's really what it's about is, is the quality of life and, and being feeling good. <laughs> I always, um, I, I like telling about one, one special patient of mine, a young um, teacher aged around, around 35 years old. Uh, she suffers from three conditions that, um, that show um, or that benefit from a ketogenic diet. She's got multiple sclerosis, she's got lipedema, and she, had, she used to have migraines. Now, we don't know about the multiple sclerosis, but she feels fine she's much stronger she's not so tired she hasn't got this fatigue um mm -hmm. she can concentrate and she can come home from school and look after her own children that's all fine her migraines are gone and her lipedema doesn't cause her any problems anymore so mm -hmm. she's been on a ketogenic diet probably by four years now and she keeps telling me she'll never ever change this except of course there, there are exceptions, and I, I think that that is my strategy. Once you find out what is good for you, how you feel best, um, what you feel best on, then mm -hmm. this is what you should do as a routine. And mm -hmm. then, when when there is a I don't know wedding or birth, uh, birthday or something, it doesn't matter. You can switch between keto. Mm -hmm. Once your, your body, your organism has grown used to this way of metabolism and, and knows how to deal with, um, with, with fat instead of sugar, then you, you can also um, make, an, make an, uh, an exception for a day or two. But the important thing is it has to be one exception. If you, right. stop, if, if you eat cake on a Sunday and you go on eating cake for two or three more days, then it becomes hard. Right. So, that is my long-term strategy because mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. most people, not only patients, patients mm -hmm. people can't be strong and resist every temptation. For them. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, and I think that uh, speaks to um, that the diet helps improve your metabolism, and then eventually, for uh, uh, many people, maybe that you become more metabolically flexible so that you can handle those um, those deviations from your your standard yeah. plan. Yeah, that's what I what do I think? What's I what what I've been observing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we are coming to the close right now, but um, it's been wonderful chatting with you. I want to remind everybody that Dr. Ferber is one of our keynote speakers. If you'd like to hear more from her, as well as our other fabulous speakers, check the links below and register. Come to our event, our virtual event on April 12, 13, and 14. It's been wonderful being here with you as always. I, I do hope that someday I would, I'm would i gonna be in Germany and in, in person. To, I was to... saying, Leslie, we, we've, we've known each other for, I don't know how many, four or five years now. Yes. We've never met in person. Never. Um, I know. I know. And so, and we worked together on, on various projects and I have another great project I'm going to share with you too, <laughs> that, to coming up. Um, um, but uh, so wonderful to talk with you and look forward to seeing you in April for our event. Thank you very much, Leslie, and all the best to you. Happy Easter. Thank you. Thank you, Gabrielle. Bye-bye, everybody.